Welcome to this video. CSS Grid or Flexbox? Which one should you use? Now, in case you need to learn CSS Grid first, I got a full course on CSS, which covers way more than just the grid, but also the grid quite extensively. A link to it with a huge discount can be found in the video description. In this video, I won't dive into what the grid is, but I'll answer this simple question. Which one should you use of the two, grid or Flexbox? Can you use them together? And if yes, how? Let's have a look. So, CSS Grid versus Flexbox. In this video, I'll also show you both in a practical example without diving too deep into it though. But let's first get the theory out of the way. The CSS Grid is a feature, a relatively new feature of the CSS specification that allows you to basically position elements in, you guessed it, a grid. So to lay out items as a grid on your page. Flexbox on the other hand is for laying out a single row or column of elements. So CSS Grid is about two dimensional positioning. We got rows and we got columns. Whereas Flexbox is about one dimensional positioning. We got either a row or a column. Now you can actually set up Flexbox to wrap its item into a new line. So if you got, let's say, them set up in a row and they exceed the space of their container, you can configure Flexbox such that it automatically wraps the items and starts a new line, but it's still one dimensional. It doesn't think of rows and columns. It's still a row of items and it just happens to run out of space and hence starts a new line. This is really important to understand. With the grid, you really define a layout which contains of rows and items and which therefore looks the way you want it to look. Now let's have a look at this in a real example. There we'll also see how we can actually use both together. Because they actually do work together very well as you will see. Now here's a well visually okay web page, which does not have any functions other than that it's awesome to show you how Grid and Flexbox work together and what their differences are. We got a header, the purple thing. We got a sidebar, the orange box. We got the main content, the white one and the footer, the black thing at the bottom here. Now clearly, as you can tell, it's not really a sidebar and so on, it's all stacked on top of each other. Now this is exactly where the grid can help us. If we want to position the things such as I just described them, which means the sidebar should sit next to the main content, for example, the grid can help us with that. So if we go to our code and quickly jump into the HTML code, we can see we got header, we got our aside element for the side menu, we got the main element at the footer and all is nested in the body. Now we can turn the body into a grid by setting its display property to grid. And again, if you need to learn more about the grid, check out some dedicated tutorials or for example, my entire CSS course to which you can also find a link in the video description. So we got this set to a grid now. And if we now reload the page, nothing changes, which actually is the default. By default, the grid, CSS grid, starts creating rows automatically and adds the content in these rows, which is why the layout didn't change. However, we can now change this by now adding grid template columns here. We need two columns in our case, one for the sidebar and one for um, the main area. So let's say the sidebar should occupy 30% and the main area 70% or just auto to automatically fill the remaining space. Then we would add two columns like this, one column with 30, one column with the rest. Now we also want to have some rows and we could also rely on the automatically create rows capabilities of the CSS grid. But here we can also define them explicitly with grid template rows. And we can say the first row is our header. So maybe we want to give this a height of 60 pixels. So for the header for rows, this is a height. For columns, the value we enter here refers to the width. So here we got 60, per sec, uh, 60 pixels height for the first row, which will actually be our header later. Then we can also um, set up a height for our main area and the sidebar. I actually want to calculate this automatically though, so I will set it to auto because I want to give the footer a height of also, let's say, 60 pixels. With this, if we save that and we now reload, 
it's totally broken because right now what happens is that it basically fills our four elements, header, main, um, sidebar, and our footer into the cells we created. And we created four cells because we got two columns. We created six cells. We got two columns and three rows. And it starts, well, occupying, populating these cells. Now we can overwrite this with a third property we add to the body, grid template areas, which has a rather strange looking syntax, but where we simply give each cell a name and therefore we can create so-called areas. For example, I know that the first two cells, which are the two cells in the topmost row, should be populated by the header. So I'll name them HD or header, whatever you like. HD like this, so separated with a white space, in a string. This refers to the first row. The first value then refers to the first column in that row, so to the first cell. And the second value refers to the second column in that first row. Now we got more rows, we got three. So I'll simply add another string. You don't have to put it into a new line, but it's easier to read. And here, the first column should actually be populated by the sidebar, side menu. So I'll name this sidebar. The second column, so the right one, should be populated by the main area, so I'll name this main. The names are totally up to you though. And then the last row, there I want to have my footer in both, um, well, cells. And you don't need to name these areas as the HTML elements. For example, for the header, I used a different name. Now we gave our areas names, we can now assign them. For that, we go to the header, for example, and there we can add the grid area property and now enter a name which we defined in grid template areas. For example, or in this case, not example, HD, without quotation marks though. So grid area HD will now ensure that the header goes into both these cells so that it spans both cells. For the aside, I'll add grid area and set it to sidebar, referring to this cell here. For the main area, which I haven't added yet, so let's add it, I'll set this to main. And for the footer, also with grid area, I'll set this to footer. Now if we save this and we reload, we're using the CSS grid so that we all of a sudden have the layout we want. And this shows us the power of the grid. Since we think in columns and rows, we can perfectly transfer our idea of the web page into a layout. It would be much harder to achieve this with other means, though it's of course possible. We've built pages like this for ages and the grid is relatively new, but this is truly powerful as you can tell. Now what we can see, however, is that our items in the header and in the footer are not positioned in a nice way. This is where we now can beautifully add Flexbox. As I showed you on the slide, Flexbox is about positioning elements in a one-dimensional um, area, so in a row or in a column. We're not thinking about rows and columns. And this is exactly what we have here. In the header, I want to position them next to each other. So in a row, three items in a row, there's no column. Well, there are three columns, I guess, but we don't need to define them. I'm just, I just want to tell CSS, please put these three items into a row and automatically position them next to each other as I instruct you. And the same for the footer. I want to position these two next to each other, let's say. Of course, you could change this, but here I want to put them next to each other. We can actually use the grid for this too, but it's a bit overkill, but we can beautifully and perfectly use Flexbox. So let's go to the header. To be precise, if we inspect the header, we want to add Flexbox to the navigation list, which holds our separate navigation items. So we go to the navigation list class here and we add display flex. By default, this positions them in a row. We can set this with flex direction row. More about Flexbox is also taught in the course I mentioned, as well as in a YouTube video by Manuel, my colleague on this channel. Now we got Flexbox set up. And now if we save this and reload, we can already see that they're sitting next to each other. Now both in the header and the footer, because the navigation list class is actually used in both places in our HTML code. Obviously, it's not positioned in the middle anymore. But due to Flexbox, we can really just say justify content and put this to center. Now this will ensure that on our main axis, which for a flex direction of row goes from left to right, they are positioned in the center. And to also center them vertically, 
we can also say or add a line items center here. This positions them on the cross axis, which is just the opposite of the main axis. So in this case, vertically. So now this will center in vertically. For this to work, however, I need to add a height of 100% to navigation list so that it takes the full available space the header gives it. With that, if we now reload, you see it's centered. Now they're sitting very close to each other. We could change this with a simple margin on the navigation items though, or alternatively, we give that flex container um, a width, center the container and use a value like space between, for example, here for justify content. So this would be an alternative. We could give this a width of some pixels, margin auto and change, justif uh, change justify content. But easier than that is just using navigation item and giving it a margin of zero top and bottom, but 10 pixels left and right, let's say. If we do that and we reload, now we got some spacing in between. And here we are using Flexbox because it's easier, it has better browser support, and it's absolutely what Flexbox is built for. So a common misconception is that you use either of the two, Grid or Flexbox. The reality is you should use both combined with each other. True, you can find ways to achieve something you do with the Grid, with Flexbox and the other way around. But if you use the strengths of both concepts, you get a way better result, as you can tell. So I hope this video could help you with diving into grid if you didn't do that already and understanding when you should use which. Hopefully see you in other videos too. Bye.